Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the special town meeting. My name is Bill Gouvea, I'm your town moderator. To my right is Lucia Longhurst, she's your town clerk. And uh, thank you for coming out on this warm summer evening and uh, joining us here. Um, it looks like the cold might be keeping one or two people away. Thank you for coming out. I'd like to start by asking you to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, well it's boring for you veterans, uh, and by veterans I mean veterans of town meeting. I'm going to go over just a few rules that we'll follow in tonight's uh, rather short warrant. But you know you got to do that because there's always somebody who'll say you didn't tell me that. Uh, so going over the rules first, I'll skip the part about everybody finding a seat because I don't think that's all that difficult. Uh, if you are not a registered voter in the town of Norton, you are welcome to stay, uh, but you must sit in a section of seats, which is where are they? There, up there, up there in the non-voting section. Those people did, were not antisocial; they just are non-voters from the town. Uh, if you are a registered voter, please sit down in the other seats here because if you sit up there, your vote would not be counted and, and you would get angry. Uh, if you wish to address this meeting, you must do so only after being recognized by the moderator. There are microphones at the back and there's a microphone up here at the uh, podium. Uh, please move to one of those if you wish to speak to any particular article. When speaking, please identify yourself by name and address for the record. And please try to keep your remarks brief and to the point and confine them only to the matter that is under consideration at the time. All speakers this evening will be treated with courtesy by the moderator and by everyone else in the room. No speaker will be allowed to use the meeting for personal attacks uh, on any individual. All remarks should be directed to the moderator. And while I will allow questions to be asked of individuals, I will not allow cross-examination type discussion from the floor. As I always say, I always say I'm not going to do that and I end up doing that anyway. In recognizing people to speak, I will endeavor to call upon those who have not yet spoken on a topic before recognize, recognizing those who have spoken. So if you're in line and you speak and then you get back in line to talk on the same thing and there's somebody behind you who hasn't spoken and I choose them instead, I'm not picking on you, it's just that you've already spoken to that and I want to give someone else a chance before I recognize you for the second time. <coughs> I will, uh, I will accept motions to move the question if they, become, if they come along, but I also uh, reserve my right to deny those motions if I don't think that enough discussion has taken place on the, on the article. Uh, if you wish to make an amendment to any motion, you must do so in writing and present it up here to the moderator and the clerk. Uh, please prepare your amendment in writing and bring it up to me if you are moving an article that has not been recommended by the Finance Committee, you must also present that motion to the town clerk in writing. I will remind you all that no motion to reconsider any article will be accepted by the moderator until at least three articles following this article, uh, following the article being reconsidered have been acted upon in this meeting, which considering there are only five, that it's only going to apply to the first two. Uh, if the article is one of the last three, then we'll waive that requirement. Um, just please be aware that any article you act on can be reconsidered. So if for some reason you're emotionally attached to Article 1 and you stay and Article 1 passes and then a whole bunch of you get up and go home all happy that Article 1 passed and then the remaining people at the end decide to reconsider Article 1 and Article 1 loses and you find out about it tomorrow and you get mad then don't be mad at me, be mad at you. Uh, there may be requests this evening to allow non-voters to speak on certain articles uh, this must be done by a motion from the floor uh, to allow them to speak. While it is the right and of, uh, the right and the decision of the meeting to allow or not allow non-residents to speak, please keep in mind that they, have, they may have valuable information that would help the meeting make the decisions. Uh, all non-voters must approach the moderator if they wish to be heard. Those are our rules, such as they are. Madam Moderator, has there been a return on this warrant? Uh, Madam Clerk, has there been a Mr. Moderator, I have served this warrant by posting attested copies at Chartley Post Office, 
Norton Post Office, Norton Municipal Center, Norton Public Library, and three other public places within the limits of said town, 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. A test. Michael Mayer, Constable of Norton, date December 27, 2018. Thank you. We'll now proceed to the warrant. After I reattach the microphone. <coughs> Article 1. <coughs> Article 1. Article 1 is declared lost for lack of a motion by the moderator. Article 2. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Finance Committee Chair. I move that the town vote to rescind the unused portions of previously authorized borrowings as follows. Uh, first one is the Long High School project. Second one was the land acquisition of Crane Farm. Third, land acquisition of Erickson. Fourth one is the Norton Reservoir Dam Spillway Improvement Project. And the last one is Norris Elementary School Sewer Connection. Okay. Mr. Chairman, do I read that to mean that you are moving Article 2 as written in the warrant? As written in the warrant. Okay. Hold on one second, a little technical difficulty. But the motion is to move Article 2, the Fit Finance Committee recommends Article 2 as moved in your warrant, as written in your warrant. While we're fixing that, is there any questions or discussion on Article 2? Everybody all set on Article 2? Yes, I see a hand. We will wait. Take your time. Yes, sir. Hi, Dave Lennon, 90 Maple. Hi. Uh, just maybe could someone elaborate? So this is funds that we authorized, and there's money that wasn't used. And where is it going? Well, but uh, Mr. Town Manager, explain that for us. Um, this is money that when there's a project, uh, first project, say the high school project, even though we're anticipating that we're getting an MSB grant and um, MSBA reimbursement, um, we have to vote the full amount of the project. And in each one of these, these were projects, the first one, was uh, the high school project. We were reimbursed by the MSBA. So even though we authorized the full amount of borrowing, we never had to go out and do the entire borrowing. And we just now have to rescind that amount. Um, the Crane Farm and Erickson, those were grants were received to help fund the purchase of uh, those properties. Uh, the Reservoir Dam, just the project came in a little under what was budgeted, and um, the LG Norris Elementary School uh, portion of the project, there were larger wheat and payments that um, reduced some of the expense um, on that project. So, as I said, it's we're authorizing the borrowing of a, an amount to pay for the entire project, and then we'll go out and do temporary borrowing until the project's done, and once we know what the final number is, we do borrowing on the, the, only the amount that we need, and now we have to rescind the authorization to borrow any higher funds now that the project is complete. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on Article 2? Okay, let's just hold on. I want to make sure our town clerk who's busy trying to get everything working here. Can't take a vote without the town clerk. So. All right, seeing no further hands, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of Article 2, please indicate by raising your hands. All those opposed? Article 2 passes by unanimous vote, as declared by the moderator. Article 3. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Chairman. I move to approve Article 3 as printed in the warrant for the January 14, 2019 special town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you just give a brief overview of what this article seeks to accomplish? The, the initial 
purpose of the article um, was just for repairs of the fence. Since that time, I believe there's been other improvements done within the town common, and this article is trying to use the funds that were set aside just for the fence to also cover the other improvements. Okay, Mr. Town Manager. This original appropriation of $65,000 was to repair the town common fence. And uh, through the efforts of uh, the highway department, uh, who's been doing a lot of the work that we thought would have to be contracted out, um, the expense has been less, and we have $18,000 remaining in the fund. This would allow that $18,000 to be used for other improvements on the common and other purchases such as lights, uh, benches, um, whatever else the uh, town common committee wants to use that money for to improve the common. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Could I ask you to go to the microphone there, sir, just so everybody can hear you? Thank you. Fred Williams, uh, 17 Kensington Road. Um, the American Legion offered for the district committee to give them $2,000 for a podium that we usually provide at all the parades for the speakers, both the town uh, selectmen and uh, Congress uh, people from the state. And uh, the district committee turned it down. I don't know if they realized commons were usually used for the gathering of uh, members of the town to discuss issues or for parades, but they shot that down. We felt yes, sir, I, 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 not, not to, I, Sorry to interrupt you, but this article that we're talking about is specifically to take this action to make this money available to do this. Right. What you're talking about is a, a separate issue that would have to be taken up with the, uh, with the commission itself. Okay. So I would have to ask you to please limit your remarks to the specifics of this article. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Brian Parker, 4 Island Drive. Uh, I just want to clarify, uh, so this, this would free up money that has not been spent, but none of those purchases have already been made, is that correct? For the, the additional lighting and so on? It's the town manager. That's, that's correct. This would be for additional purchases. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? on Article 3. Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 3, please indicate by raising your hands. All those opposed, Article 3 passes by majority vote, as declared by the moderator. Article 4. Mr. Chairman. I move to approve Article 4 as printed in the January 14, 2019 special town meeting. Okay, Article 4 is moved and seconded as printed in your warrant. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, could you give us a brief description of what this does? This would allow uh, the Board of Selectmen to enter into what is indicated here as a pilot agreement um, with a company that is trying to next Sun Energy, which is trying to install solar panels um, a 210 Bay Road. Okay. Uh, Mr. Town Manager? This agreement would uh, pay to the town $200,000 a year for 20 years. Um, we need to come to town meeting. Select me early authorized to award contracts of three years. Anything longer than three years, we have to come to town meeting. Um, and that's why in order to have a 20-year agreement. This would take out any of the uncertainty that there may be when it comes to a facility such as this, the ups and downs in the economy, or the ups and downs in um, the market for energy could affect the value of the, of the, uh, the project. And we'd, we could be in court battling with uh, the developer over, over different years, over the amount that we're going to uh, be able to assess the property. Um, 
This $200,000 a year is a bit above what the assessors uh, looked at would be the taxation. The first year was about 160000 I think, on this project. So um, it's a good deal for the town, and it, um, it's a steady income for 20 years. Okay, and it was mentioned pilot. Does everybody understand the term pilot? It means payment in lieu of taxes. And so this would be payments to the town that would be made in lieu of taxation, although taxes would already be paid on this property by the actual owners. Everybody understand that aspect of it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to get this gentleman and then I'll get this gentleman. Yes, sir. Back at the microphone. Ryan Sherman, 222 Bay Road. Um, I just had a follow-up comment to the finances. Um, just thinking about $200,000 certainly sounds like a lot to um, an individual or individual household, but um, considering that the town annual budget is uh, $58.5 million, it's not even a drop in the bucket. It's less than, well, it's about 0.003% of the annual town budget um, and stretched over 20 years. I think it's important to consider that um, even with a, a conservative inflation rate of around 2%, uh, 20 years from now, $200,000 would approximately be worth about $134,000. So although it would be steady income, it would be declining over a 20-year period. Um, so I just wanted to share those for consideration. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chuck Yell, the 201 Bay Road. Could, could you answer me, is, is Next Stop Energy a nonprofit or is it business? The problem. It's the town manager. Uh, Next Sun Energy is a corporation. Okay. My understanding is that they have issues about the community. Um, and now I'm wondering if that's part of the issue they have in the community with the money. Because $200,000, like that gentleman just said, or 20 years is dropping the bucket. I can see if there was a percentage over time, maybe five years, 10 years, 15 years, it changes a little bit. $200,000 is not very much considering what it's going to do to the people in the area. Well, looking at two hundred thousand, we we don't have the ability to do anything other than the two hundred thousand. There's formulas that the assessors have to go by. This is similar to as if the assessors were assessing the property. They look at, they work with the DOR. There's a formula that they have to go by. You can't have a pilot with an outrageous amount of money. The uh, DOR would not approve. The Department of Revenue would not approve that. This is all based on formulas that the state has. Well, I think it sounds like it's based on today's dollar, not the dollar from 15 years from now. Because our taxes aren't going to No, it, it's based on, they look, they look at a uh, project, the cost of a project. They look at um, what is going to be produced, how much energy is going to be, be to produced out from the project. They look at what they're going to sell that energy for. The state does projections with the assessor's office over the life of the uh, 20 years, and that's how they base averaging out the 200000 on the life of the uh, agreement. It just seems a reason for $200,000 for 20 years for business. If you're not a profit group, I'd, hey, I'd say give them whatever they can, but what you can for business is a and then the effect it's going to have, I don't think it's worth it for people in the area. But I just want to make sure we understand, and I want to make sure I understand. This time is, this is $200,000 per year, 20 years, is that correct? That is correct. It's $200,000 a year for 20 years. And as I said earlier, this takes out some of the unpredictability because the markets, I mean, you see the price of oil can go up and the price of oil can drop. Right. The, 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 Excuse me, let, let, let him finish. <laughs> The profitability of a solar facility could go up and it could go down. And this, each year that that goes up and down, we could have the developer in taking us to a pallet tax board stating that we're over assessing them because of this. It saves us money without having to go to court and um, it gives us the stability over the 20 years. So this is a, a total of 20 years, we're talking about $4 million. I just want to make sure everybody understands that it's not 200,000 in over 20 years, it's 200,000. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It doesn't look 
got to leave that town benefit to you. You're looking at it differently than I do, but as a resident, I don't see it as a benefit to us when it's a business. It's not, like I said, it's a non-profit group or something to that effect. I have no problem like that, but it's a business to make money. Maybe if there was a percentage involved in it over the years, something like that, based on their profits, then something like that might be an idea to consider. But it's just... Thank you, sir. Our town council. Mr. Moderator, Lauren Goldberg, KPL. Um, I just wanted to clarify that this type of an agreement is different than an agreement where there's an entity that's not required to pay taxes. So, for example, a nonprofit is not required to pay taxes, and the town and the nonprofit can come to an agreement about a payment instead of taxes. Um, this is different than that. Essentially, what this is is a way. It's, it's also referred to as a pilot, but it's essentially a way to to agree upon the assessment model for the entire term of the agreement and then to stabilize the amount that the town will get. So the town agrees to the model and the, the company agrees to the model and DOR has to approve that. And then that model is used for the remainder of the taxable period. So it is not as though that entity would not otherwise have to pay taxes, they would. The question would be how much they would have to pay. And in some years, as the town manager indicated, if the town assessed it the same way it had done it the year before, what they found with these energy companies is that they go into court, into the tele ta uh, tax board, to fight their assessments. And that's an expensive proposition. It takes a lot of time and a lot of work. This, this kind of an agreement does benefit the town in that it's regular, it's agreed upon, and it's not subject to market changes. So all the assessors, the company, and the Department of Revenue are required to look at this over the long term to see is this how much the town would be entitled to be paid during that period. And their modeling suggests that regardless of whether this agreement was in, in place or not, that $4 million price tag is just about what would have to be paid. The difference here is that it's agreed to ahead of time. There's no having to fight about it after this, after the agreement signed. And the town can count on that tax revenue without an expenditure to ensure that it gets paid. Thank you, Council. Gentleman in the back. Hi, Dave Worthley, 19 Fairley Lane. I guess I have a lot of concerns on a lot of different levels, but one of the major ones is does anybody have any sense about what this does to property values for direct butters? Because I know I just built um, kind of the house so maybe 50 years. I just built a house right literally abutting the whole project which will change everything. So I was just wondering if anybody had any experience or thoughts about what that does. Maybe this isn't even the right place to ask that, but that's, it does change the landscape and the whole scope of the property. I think it's a fair question. If someone would like to respond to it. Volunteers are coming fast and furious. <laughs> Mr. Town Manager. Um. I know that um, we have had other solar projects in town that have gone through uh, the site plan process and as part of that process there's some provision put in there um, to um, compensate homeowners if there is any devaluation of properties. So when that process takes place maybe it could be addressed. So this, this article, and I want to check with council too, and with you, uh, this article authorizes the selectmen to enter into negotiations. It's not an article to approve a specific pre-negotiated agreement, but it's an it's authorization to extend into authority. Is that correct, or is that? No, it's author authorization to approve this agreement. So there is a firm agreement that we're voting on, right? Okay, I wanted to make sure that that was clear. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm George Aventinas from 207 Bay Road. Um, we were only given less than a week on the plans. The planner just got his, you know, Wednesday, the same day I walked into his office. For residents, I don't think that's fair at all. You just throw it right on our desk and we don't even get to look at it or anything. Well, so let me, let me, let me explain. This is not to approve any plans or to approve any zoning or to approve anything like that. This is merely to talk about whether or not a, a pilot agreement should be I, I understand your point. I have little jumps to that. Why you vote on this? We don't agree on that for us. Well, and the, and the reason is we're going to vote on it because it's on the warrant and because that's what we have to do when something's on the warrant. Um, I, you know, it, it's, I don't get to, I, we, don't, we don't get to tell you, you know, 
whether, whether it's a good idea. We, we're just voting because it's been brought to our attention and the selectmen and I believe the town manager believe they have a plan that is in the best interest of the town and they're presenting it and I think that's, I think that's the purpose. Well, I live right across the street from there with little kids and animals of the best of town without me no more, a lot more. Let me ask the town manager if he wants to address that. Just if, if the, this is just to approve this agreement, if the project is never built, then the agreement doesn't move forward. This just puts it in place so that we know if that, agree, if that project gets approved, we're going to get a set amount of money for 20 years. So as you're saying, this does not approve the project? Correct. Right. It, 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 the project will have to go through planning board and conservation, and it will be a while before. Okay, so again, as the town manager and town council point out, this is not approving the project itself. It's approving the payment of taxes if the project is ever built. Yes, sir. Back. David Dumont, 27 Barrow Street. Maybe I'm ahead of myself. Do we know how many acres this is and what the megawatts for this, pro for this uh, project is? So, town manager. Um, the project, the pilot is based on the megawatts which is eight megawatts. How many acres? I, excuse me, I couldn't tell you that. I don't know the acreage. That'd be site plan through the planning board. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Just a point of information for this gentleman over here. Solar cells have changed your efficiency in probably three times in the past 10 years. If they install these solar cells, 10 years down the road, they be could become very inefficient compared to what will be available at that point. And so trying to make a graduated tax, why they could act literally be losing money, or they'll have to come back to the town if they want to upgrade their system to a more efficient energy system, uh, we would get the vote all over again about how much would be available as far as uh, funds go or allowable by us. Just a point in for Thank you. It's the town manager. Just excuse me, a point of correction. I do know it's uh, 65 acres approximately. Uh, yes, ma'am. Renee Daly, 69 South Washington Street. This might be a question for town council, but what happens if the business goes out of business, the corporation does? Is there any sort of payout that you would get to meet that $4 million? Town okay. council. Um, the way that the agreement is drafted, it applies to successors and interest as well. So whoever took it over would be under the same agreement as the existing agreement. That's assuming that somebody did take it over? That's assuming, and otherwise they'd be liable for taxes. This is, as I said, this is an agreement about how taxes are going to be paid. So they'd be subject to state law as to payment of taxes. Thank you. Yes, Kevin. Uh, Kevin O'Neill, 17 Buddhist Drive. You may just answer this, but the the net increase in revenue with this program in lieu of the taxes that we would not otherwise collect over the 20 years, what is the net difference? Our council. Mr. Moderator, three. Um, it's the same. Essentially what they do is they look out over 20 years, they say here's the amount we expect, and using whatever the model is, we expect that this entity would pay in taxes over 20 years, and instead of having it be you know, one year higher, one year lower, one year higher, one year lower, having to argue about that, it just sets it at, at one twentieth of the value. So it would be the same. That's the idea, is that it's evenly spread throughout the entire period versus being subject to market variation. Thank you. One of the questions from moderator? Yes. Um, so with the net revenue being neutral, um, there is a negative impact in that the abutters and anyone else that, you know, um, Travels down Bay Road would have a view of the solar panels versus the current view at no net increase in revenue uh, to the town. I believe that's the first thing. Is, is the question if taxes are being paid on the property and taxes in lieu of pay, uh, payment in lieu of taxes? Is that 
Uh, no, as Tom Council mentioned, the, the, the difference over the 20 years is no different whether they paid the taxes or entered into this agreement. So what I'm saying is that the net revenue being neutral, no increase, there is a cost as far as quality of life for some of the abutters, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, without weighing in on quality of life issues at all, just talking about the revenue, if that project isn't built, then that $4 million doesn't come into the town's coffers at all. Um, it being spread out over time, that's the additional amount because of the project, not what the, the taxes would be without the project. So let's, so the different, the net revenue is $200,000 a year in addition if this passes. If it doesn't pass, there will be two. If it does pass, there'll be an additional two hundred thousand. If it doesn't pass, you won't get that two hundred thousand. It's not a substitution. It's not a, a net. It's either two hundred thousand dollars a year or nothing. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, the current tax revenue on that property, I guess it's irrelevant because we're talking about the increase. But does that go away with this agreement? The current <laughs> tax revenue. It doesn't. Thank you. Okay. And I believe, I believe Tom Council, I mean, uh, the town manager said it's about 160000 Is that correct? I just want to make sure we get our numbers uh, straight. The 160000 I referred to was if this um, property was, the new, if this project was taxed this year, oh, okay. it would have been 160000 instead of 200000 this year. Okay, so if the, if I'm the not sure what the, yeah. the current site is, um, it's a it's a farm site. But whatever taxes are being paid on the current site would continue to be paid on the current site. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's. And I was trying to get there. It was a long route. I think we got there. Yes, sir. James Wagner, 211 Mayor. Uh, I was just wondering if this agreement solidifies the location the solar panels, the 210 Bay Road across the street? It's the town manager. Um, it does not solidify where the project is built on that site at all. It just, you, that is the property where the project would be built, but that's up to the site plan process. Have other locations been explored or? Um, Excuse me, I'm gonna interrupt that because it, it, the question, this is not a matter of, of location. This is a matter of whether or not they, they agree to that, uh, whether they agree to that payment of little taxes. And I believe that's regardless of where it's located in town, as long as it meets zoning and other requirements. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tom Manager or Tom Council? Um, no, if... Um, okay, and that's not correct, so... If this, project, if this project location was not approved, we'd have to do a new pilot with a new location. So I apologize, so your question is accurate and fair. Because in Bay Road, it's a very active road. There's a lot of people coming. I mean, with that location, there's gonna be a lot of glare from the solar panels, distracting drivers. It's a thin road to begin with, and there's not even room for sidewalks. So that's my argument against it. Um, in. And once again, that's all issues that would be addressed in the site plan process. Yes, sir. Uh, the gentleman. Okay, that's okay. Go to Peter. The mayor gets preference. <laughs> Peter J. Wiggins, 157 Metz Bay Avenue, Trail 14, North Massachusetts. And before that, I used to live on Bay Road at 135 Bay Road, and I lived not too far from the Cranberry Bogs. And I, I used to have friends, and I, and I visit Bay Road often, and the concern is about the solar glare on the panels that distract drivers and it's a busy, busy road and it's a historic road and the credit box were full of heaven probably for many, many years. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. Kevin Schlegel, West Side Street. Does anybody know what uh, this is on right now, this lot 11? This is Tom Andrew. It is owned R80. Residential, correct? Okay, so. And I understand that there's abutters, I understand that there's solar glare, there's also other, but we're not even talking about that. We're talking about that entering a pilot right now just to make sure this can even work. It's all just going to bypass conservation, there's a 
logic book that runs through there. We're talking about step Z here, and we're on step A, all right? This is then to enter an agreement and find out if this is gonna work or not even for the area. It may not even work for the conservation down there, but I can tell you, this isn't gonna stay Cranberry Box forever. It's zoned already. It's not saying in five years it will be changed to another zone. It will be talking to a whole other subject. If this goes through and it does become solar panels, at least you're guaranteed 20 years of solar panels and not even more houses or possibly industrial. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but we just saw it happen. Things can change, zoning changes. Let's swear about step A before we worry about step Z, okay? Let's enter the pilot and then we can discuss where this is actually going to go, what it's going to look like, and how it's going to affect Bay Road and things. I understand if I live down there, I want the same curse, at least hear it out. But we can't hear it out unless we get this pilot. Any other questions or discussions on Article 4? Oh, I, what, once I have you better recognize this gentleman who hasn't spoken yet. Uh, Francis Riley. You can get a little closer to that microphone so we can hear you, sir. Francis Riley, 174 Pine Street. Is this area the Cranberry Bogs, and is it in uh, uh, Chapter 61? Time management. Yes to both of those questions. And I think chapter 61, if I'm correct, is that an agricultural yes. use? Yeah. So there, yes. Ian. Ian is. <laughs> Not that close. Chapter 61. I don't believe that what you said for taxes is correct. There's no way he's paying. He, he didn't say that. Ta I misinterpreted that. So the town manager is not. He did not say that. So take him off the hook for that. That was my fault. Because it's the farm. Consider the farm is correct. It's less. Yeah. And then because it's cranberry bogs, that's considered wetlands. Correct. Correct. So can you build solar on wetlands? Um, we're going to address that in the next article. <coughs> did that's. I think part of the topic of the discussion of the of the next article. I can only tell you, Swell, you've been around long enough. There's been a lot of things built where I didn't think they could be built in this town over the years. So I think it's it's all a matter of conjecture right now at this point. Well, I believe what the questions that people have is you you go and be playing with this before you, they they know everything is you know whether it goes before the planning board and stuff. So you kind of put them Errors before the loss. And, and let's point out again, as, as has been said, this does not give approval to the project in any way, shape, or form. It does not, it still has to go through planning, it still has to go through conservation, it still has to have site approval. It would have to do all these things. I want to stress that the scope of this article is only to approve a pilot that if the project is built, this is what the people would pay to the town. That's the only thing up for discussion here, not the location of where specific solar panels would be or any mitigating factors. This is only the discussion on whether there would be payment in lieu of taxes if this project eventually passed all its hurdles and were built. Mr. Grant. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the previous speaker uh, made me think of a good point. Um, is this land being taken out of 61A, the farm? or agricultural exclusion and taxes because this seems to be a commercial enterprise. That 65 acres, is that being taken out of the 61 acres that were being sold and then they go back a few years and pay the taxes they're due? Because this is nothing. This is an agricultural, ladies and gentlemen. How's that work? It's a town manager. Um, also to be talked about in the next article, um, the land will remain productive for cranberries. <laughs> okay, so the answer is that nice. it is that in this in this thing, but we're not talking about the specifics of the particular site. That site would remain a cranberry bog, but would apparently have solar panels in addition to it, so it would remain farmland. Yeah. We're not talking about that, so nope. we're not going to talk about that. It was a tax question, but here we go. I got you. We have, <laughs> we have solar yep. panels over bars. Cool. Yes. Is there a, um, any way to have a bond or something to assure these folks pay like a guarantee? Once again, to be um, 
addressed through the site plan approval process. Uh, the planning board always requires that a bond be put up. 120% of the value of the uh, project more usually is what's required. Um, a bond that will um, cover removal of the uh, solar panels if the project ever goes out of business. Thank you. Yes. Denise Luciano, Six Buddhist Drive. I'd like to move the question. The vote. I don't know if I said that right. I apologize. No, you, you, you said it right. Okay. Um, seeing that I don't see anyone else lined up at the microphone. I, okay, I'm not going to cut the gentleman out. So, Denise, I, if you would kindly re remove that motion, I'll recognize you right after this gentleman is done, and you can do it again. Okay. That'd be okay? Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Scott Bacon, 209 Bay Road. I see in the Article 4 bump in front of us here that the legal entities, the term, and the address are very clearly defined. I was curious on the dollar amount that you mentioned. It identifies in the first line on the screen here that we're all looking at that the Board of Selectmen has the ability to negotiate. Can you explain what kind of terms of negotiation the Board of Selectmen can operate under? The ability to change the dollar amount that people live on today, or is that something that can for change? <coughs> Council, do you want to tackle that one for us? Mr. Moderator, essentially the board has already negotiated an agreement and that's the agreement that's being brought forth today. Um, the concept of authorizing the board to negotiate is uh, language that's essentially found in DOR um, materials from 1999 and it's been carried forward in most communities, um, but the board didn't need authority to negotiate an agreement, they need authority to sign. So basically, I think what Council is saying, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong, is that this is on the deal that's been negotiated, and that would be the deal that you're you're voting on. Okay. Denise, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> Denise Luciano, who is probably to make the motion to vote. I, I think the motion was to move the question. I'll move the question. Now. A motion to move the question is a motion to end debate. If you if you vote yes and move the question, then all debate on this article will stop, and we'll move directly to a vote. If you vote no, then you are voting to continue discussion on the motion and we will continue that discussion. Everybody understand? Yes, we stop and we vote. No, we keep talking about it. Everybody clear on that? Okay, all those in favor, moving the question, please indicate by raising your hand. All those opposed? Motion passes by majority vote. The question is moved. We'll now proceed to the vote. Okay. On article four. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Council very astutely pointed out that that's two thirds vote. So I think it was, but I'm going to take it again just to point that out. Uh, all those in favor of moving the question, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The question is voted to move by a two thirds majority vote as declared by the moderator. Thank you, Council. Uh, now we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of Article 4 as printed in the warrant, please indicate by raising your hands. All those opposed? Article 4 passes by majority vote, declared by the moderator. Article 5. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Chairman. I move that the town vote to amend the Norton Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 175, General Code, Article 22, large scale ground mounted solar photo installations text to be deleted shown in bold strike through and text being inserted showed in bold underline as printed in the warrant for the January 14th, 2019 special town meeting. Okay, so the motion is to move Article 5 as printed in your warrant. Ladies and gentlemen, Article 5 is a zoning amendment as such it will require a two-thirds majority vote for passage. Um, a zoning article also requires uh, a report to the town meeting of the action of the planning board on the article. So is there a representative of the planning board? Can we get you to the microphone? And see if you tell us, uh, has the planning board held a public hearing on this matter? Uh, Mr. Moderator, yes, the planning board conducted a public hearing. Um, notice was posted 
on December 4th, December 11th in Sun Chronicle, posted at Town Hall, and notice given to all parties required by law. Public hearing was conducted on December 18th. Um, following review, presentation, uh, discussion of the bylaw amendments, and public comment, uh, planning board voted to approve the to forward to tonight's special town meeting the full text of the amendments as presented here tonight by a vote of five to zero. Thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to add on the uh, on the article from the planning board standpoint? Um, no, as stated, uh, the planning board, after discussion, um, unanimous, unanimously approved uh, the recommendation, um, both in promoting the large scale um, ground mounted photovoltaic installations and to allow for solar facilities to um, take advantage of the Massachusetts Department of Energy SMART program, um, which would then apply to cranberry bog installations. Thank you. Well, Mr. Town Manager. This article accomplishes two things. Um, the first thing, um, as the state likes to call it, is solar by right. Um, it'd be better, more, the better term would be solar without the need for a special permit. Um, and the reason we want to have that is we're trying to become certified as a green community. Um, once you're certified as a green community, you're eligible for energy saving grants uh, from the Commonwealth that will help us with improvements on uh, windows, boilers, um, lighting, things that we could save us money uh, in the future. And in order to become a green community, there were two things that we need. One is solar by right, and in May, we'll be coming back to town meeting with an article to um, adopt the stretch code for construction. Um, so solar by right, you still need, a, a developer will still need to go to the planning board for a site plan approval. There'll be um, public notice to all the abutters, every, so all the abutters will be aware that there's a project going on. They'd be able to come in and um, work with the planning board to assure that their uh, homes um, get as much protection as, is there, as they're able to. Um, also, if there's any wetland issues, um, we will still require a filing before conservation. So the only difference is you don't need a special permit. So it's a, it's a majority vote of the planning board to approve a project now, rather than a super majority, two thirds um, um, majority to approve a project under the site plan, under the special permit. And the second aspect is um, the SMART program that the state has just adopted that allows for the construction of solar panels on active cranberry bogs. And there's a requirement that those bogs remain active um, during uh, the life of that solar project. So um, you just can't build solar panels over um, a cranberry bog and not keep it active. It has to remain active as part of this. And, um, the state um, DEP has uh, fully vetted this program and they have uh, decided that, uh, that the cranberries can still grow even though there's solar panels above them. In some instances, they grow because they're not in the full sun all the time, so uh, sometimes they benefit from it. Um, so in, in this article, um, right now, it, it does allow those two things, and um, hopefully the town meeting will prove it. Thank you. I, I just want to make one, and I, again, I'm checking with council and everything, but when we talk about, just to be technically correct, a supermajority vote of the planning board, which has been portrayed as the main difference, supermajority means you must have five votes. It's not a two-thirds. It's a, a five vote. Is that correct? It's four-fifths. Okay. So it, it's a four-fifths majority. I just want to make sure we get the uh, technical part before someone claims that we weren't accurate on that. Any questions, any comments, any discussion? 
on Article 5. Yes, sir. Chuck Gallagher, 201 Bay Road. Um, some of the things that concerned me was the manner that this process came about. The gentleman from, I believe, 207 Bay Road, I didn't find out until the middle of last week. I work 60 hours a week. I got a one year old and a three year old. I'm busy. I don't have time to get involved in something I'd like to. I think that we should have known from the very start, for other informed from the very beginning, so we could be more involved, is that people that would be directly affected by it. I think it was, uh, although the, the town did what they were required to do by posting it in certain locations, I think a lot of times those postings were put forward back in the 20s when that, when it did all this, it was a small community. You have uh, social media, you have a lot more out there now, you could have notified people a lot earlier. And actually the meeting that we were informed about wasn't even this one. We were informed about another meeting. And then there's another thing that we're going to go through with the uh, conservation community. So I'm not happy with the way that this was brought forward. A lot of this, I'm not happy with as far as 50 to 75 feet. So if this is my doorstep, there can be a solar panel where that exit sign is. So there's no question in my mind, property value is going to be lower. Because I just bought my house three years ago. And I'm on the opposite side of the blocks on Bay Road. If I was looking at a house on the side of the blocks and I saw those solar panels, I would turn around and left. No matter how nice the house is. Because I don't want my kids that close to all that electricity. I don't think it's safe for person. I'm in favor of solar panels. I'm in favor of the town would agree, but not the manner that this is going forward. The other concerns I have, excuse me, is that aside from the 50 to 75 feet, is that uh, there was some concern in the town of Brown that the same, I believe it was September of 2018, that this company that's here now was denied the same thing for legal and ethical issues. And like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of time to look into it, but I was wondering if you people knew about that. The Dartmouth. The, the, the same thing was attempted to go forward and down, and then the second voted down 5 0 against it because of legal and ethical issues, which I don't know what the details were. Okay, I, while I will certainly allow factual discussion on things that occurred, I will not allow speculation on things that are unknown or not specify. So if we're going to talk about a specific act and we have specific backup, I'll allow that. If we're going to merely speculate on something that's hearsay and been told about somebody else, I'm not going to allow that, sir. It's a newspaper. Don't lie, don't lie. Newspaper. Trust me, I write for one. Don't believe everything you wrote, you read in the newspaper. We've got to deal with facts. I can't allow speculation on things that are unproven. That was Okay. As a resident, I'm extremely let down the process of this one forward. I have two young kids. My understanding with the re brief reading that I've been able to do is that this stuff can be dangerous. It can cause uh, cancer and other difficulties medically. And even a low level. So I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an engineer. I don't understand a lot of this stuff. Like 50 to 75 feet away from the house, 60 acres of panels. I don't see how you could think of property value would go down. And for us to be kept out of the loop until last week, realistically kept out of the loop. I think that's, I think that's irresponsible. I think it's wrong that the people of Bay Road have to be here when all this down. We should have sat down with the town weeks or months ago learning about it. Because now if it goes tonight, the whole town is going to be open to these solar panels. It's not just this property. So I, I just want to, again, stress, this hearing was legally posted, it met all the requirements that was done. The, hear the hearing was posted. I just don't want to leave the impression okay. that people were not notified. Everybody was properly notified. The hearing was held. This meeting was held. There is, there is no grounds. You know, I understand your point is that you think it should have been beyond that. Uh, but I just want to point out that the hearing was properly posted with all the, with all the sufficient notice according to the law. Right. I believe the town owes it townspeople more than just that. OK. The townspeople, all the residents are directly affected more information about what's going to happen in their area. Not someone over on 123 near the outer line, but the people that are right there, they're going to have right in their backyard, should have been known, told rather, informed by the town more about this ahead of time. We still don't know 100% what's going on. We haven't seen a site plan. We don't know where the panel's going to be laid out. We don't know if it's going to be just walking the road. We don't know anything. And, and the reason for that, sir, again, this, and I want to stress, because I, I, I'm trying to walk a fine line here. This. It certainly affects the project that is being proposed, but it is not specifically, totally about that project. It also basically affects other projects. It affects, this is a zoning change. This is not for this specific Bay Road project. This is a zoning change that would affect 
any other project that comes through, which may bolster your argument, or it may, you know, but it's not specifically tailored to this plan. So all the things you're talking about, changing setbacks, doing all those, you know, those things, are things that the planning board in their site review would have to go through, the conservation would have to go through. But your points about, you know, anything that's in here that you want to have changed, it would change not only for that project, but for all projects, you know, that have similar type. So they can't do the zoning to just for this area? It has to be done for the whole town? Or could they have done it specifically for this area, for this piece of construction? Now you're getting into... No, I, I don't... No, no, and I'm not, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying, now you're getting into something I don't know, and I will certainly turn to the town manager, because they know everything. Because yeah. that's what they do for the whole town now. Like, people on the other side of town have the same problems next year that we have today. The people who may vote them. This time yeah, this is to allow solar by right in the entire town. That, that's one of the requirements. And the other one is to allow the development on cranberry bogs wherever they may be in town, not any particular project. And the particular project you're referring to, the planning board and conservation both have notice requirements that they're required to follow, and they will and probably already have notified all the abutters um, within the distance that's required by law of the proposed tearings that are coming up. And that's when you'll have time to weigh in with the planning board about what you want to see to protect your property. First, I would have liked to have been told earlier so we could be involved in all this process. But they, the, they can't notify you earlier if they don't know what the project is going to be. They have to receive the filing of the site plan before they can notify about us. I understand, but so we have a week to, do, to research ourselves and try to figure out what's going on. Because once it's voted on, it's done. Well, okay, I, I think we've made the point that you wish you had been notified sooner, and we've made the point that the, the notification was within the law. I think we need to kind of stop that point at that point. What's the next one? Yes, sir. Uh, Francis Riley, 174 Pine Street. Uh, one question, if these solar panels that are going to be placed over bogs, will they be higher, the supports higher than the normal solar field? Mr. Town Manager. I believe in these developments, the panels are 9 to 10 feet high above the, above the cranberries. Yes, ma'am. Maureen Straczynski, 283 East Main Street. Point of information, you, you suggested that these changes to the zoning bylaws are to stand. Are they only to stand for, for, for solar projects? Because that would make a di big difference because you're waiving the special permit process. And it, my question is, do they only stand for solar projects? This is, this is only the solar portion of the bylaw. Okay, because it would be a big change, and you're, you're taking authority away from the Zoning Commission, as I see it, and putting it in the hands of the Town Planner and the Building Commissioner, the way that some of these waivers are written. No, if you, if you look at the strikeouts in the article, in the bold, it's, it's not taking, there is no, nothing to do with the Zoning Board. This is strictly allowing solar panels by right they still have to meet the zoning setback requirements the only difference is there's no special permit required from the planning board just the site plan review process and the other thing to follow up with the gentleman before me said i stood at this town meeting when the condine project was here and in the first meeting we discovered that there was not adequate notice sent to the the abutters regarding planning board and zoning board meetings. So I, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop you there, ma'am. I'm not gonna entertain any more discussion about proper notice. There has been proper notice on, on this meeting. There's been proper notice on the hearings. And unless you have proof that someone was denied notice, I'm gonna stop that line of discussion. Fine. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeffrey Bowden, 130 Bay Road. This applies to primary bugs. How many primary bugs are in the town of Norton? 
Tom Manager's in charge of counting cranberry bottles. <laughs> I believe there's six. This, this was, you know, obviously the previous article began being that I bought the cranberry bottles within 50 feet of where my kids play every day. Um, I, I can't fathom having a solar farm over a cranberry bond on protected wetland. Uh, it is a major concern to uh, change the zoning just for this. And uh, it honestly seems just for this project and no other cranberry bond besides the bay road cranberry bond. Thank you. Yes, sir. Which 207 Bay Road? A um, couple things. One was, I read an article as of September 25th, 2018 from the Vineyard Gazette in Martha's Vineyard. They had a solar farm put in there in 2014. It's like a neighborhood of us. And now they all the neighbors regret it. You know, they can go look it up. I can show you pictures and stuff. All the, they hear noise all the time during the daytime. Uh, a lot of trucks come in and out. Whatever they do and stuff. And uh, just like I said, you know, what does the cranberry box get out of this? What is there? Do they are they offering anything from this? The company that does the cranberry box, or how's that work out? Mr. Town Manager, um, I can't say specifically what the agreement is that Sun Energy would have with the owner of the cranberry box, but I can tell you right now, the cranberry growers are struggling. There's no market for the cranberries. They can't sell them in China like they used to. So it's a... Uh, That's a tariff that's going on right now. But okay, let's, let's, one at a time, please. Let's time manage So time. they're having a very <coughs> tough time right now. Like I said, it's a tariff that are fighting right now with our administration. That hasn't, you know, how long that lasts could be a month, could be a year's. But we don't know about that. But like I said, you know, if you look up the article, the neighbors in the vineyard hate it every time. They're very against it. They hate it. They wish it never went in. You know, it's an article that I think everybody should read. How much they they can't stand the noise. You know, I don't want to live like I said right across the street and hear the noise all day. You know, me and my neighbors, we hang out in the back end. We enjoy ourselves. The kids play and stuff. I don't want to hear buzzing. Thank you. Is there any way you can guarantee us there's going to be no noise and stuff? And I can I can answer that. You know, Tom Andrew can't guarantee the sun is going to come up in the morning, so I seriously doubt he can guarantee you there'll be no noise from any business going on in town. Kevin. Kevin Schlegel, West Side. So again, I'm just going to go back to what I said before. We're talking about Z. This is A. And I know I said it last time, but okay, this is B then, all right? Because what we're talking about is amending the zoning so that we can have a discussion on whether this project is going to work down there. We've got to go through a million committees, a million meetings, a million of you guys to come in from Bay Road and all the above us and voice all your opinions. Just like the Condine project, just like any other project goes on in town. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen what goes on in town. And I'm not knocking anybody, but people can't put up a sign for their business on West Main Street without 50 committees and, and 50 other people getting involved and signing off on it. We're not talking about this getting approved right now and then they're going to start drilling pylons and hanging solar panels on your roof tomorrow in your neighborhood. We're talking about making an amendment for the bylaw so that we can have a discussion on this project is going to work down there. I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, does anybody know the Conservation Commission down around here? And I say that the nicest way possible. Do you think she's going to let something get built on this land that's going to affect anything to do with it? It's not going to happen. I mean, has anybody been around long enough? And I said that the next way possible. But we're not talking about a chemical company to get built on top of it. And I understand the abundance. I live on West Hodge Street. If it happened to me tomorrow, I would have concerns. I'd go to the meetings. I'd voice my opinion if I was going to bother. If I was 75 feet from it, I'd want to know the safety things of it. But we're talking about Z, and this is B. Okay? We can't talk about Z. We can't talk about what's going to happen in five years if we don't amend this. They're giving us $200,000. We have no money, okay? There's no guarantee what this property is going to be in five years. I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's probably not gonna be a cranberry bog. It may not be the great place that you guys have for walking your dog. I don't know, I can't guarantee you anything. What I can guarantee that in five years, we still need $200,000. In 20 years, we won't have $4 million. They're giving us a check. We need to think of ways to make money. The town is making this a, a, a reach out. Let's do the right thing, let's get this thing loaded through, and then we'll discuss on what it does for our buddies, okay? 
Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Ryan Sherman, 222 Bay Road. I mean, I think we heard we've heard a lot about this particular project, and it certainly does, as a mother, affect me personally and my family. And I'm, uh, Joe mentioned he's across the street. I'm one of those right on the box, and I have a very pregnant wife here with me today. We're expecting our first child, and certainly. Congratulations. Thank you. I do not want to raise a family, and I bought a house expected to raise a family on a cranberry bog or conservation land. So, of course, personally, I do not want this project to go through. But I, this particular article, if I heard correctly, isn't just about this project. You, um, if I if I understand it, um, the approval of this article would uh, be switching spe from special permit approval to by right which, if I understand correctly, means that um, future projects that meet the requirements of being over on over five acres of uh, residential land and meet the, um, uh, the zoning, uh, you know, the 75 feet, uh, 50 feet um, back of uh, houses, um, we're essentially waiving the, the right to actually have this discussion like we are today, that um, at least I'm here and I'm able to voice my opinion, my concern. Um, from what I understand, if we go to buy right, uh, it wouldn't require a two-thirds uh, residential vote. Is that correct? Uh, that's not quite okay. correct, sir. Okay. What, what happens is, if this passes, then the planning board, either way, whether this passes or it doesn't pass, the planning board still has the right to grant it. The only thing you're really deciding in that aspect of this is whether the planning board decides it by a four-fifths vote, basically five, a super majority of five members, or whether it decides it by a majority vote, which is how it decides it. Either way, it does not come back to this meeting. No matter what you vote on this, it does not, for that purpose, does not come back to this meeting. Okay, so would future projects that meet these requirements have this type of um, special town meeting, or could they, or would it be uh, move to by right voting by the boards. The, the, the answer to that is so if, if they needed a zoning amendment, then it would come here, but this would probably take care of that. If they needed a, uh, a special agreement, such as the article we did previously to a pay, payment of taxes, then it would have to come here. But either way, if somebody wants to put a solar farm up, uh, assuming it meets zoning, mm -hmm. then it does not have to be approved by a town meeting. It just has to be approved by the planning, conservation, and all the agencies we have to protect us. That makes sense. So, so this article, though, would impact more than just this particular project in that way. Mr. Tommy Andrew. Whether this article was here or not, if someone was proposing to build a solar facility, they wouldn't have to come to town meeting. All, as the moderator said, the only thing that's changing, um, what are there, seven members of the planning board? So instead of just having four members out of seven having to vote for the project, um, it, it would allow only four members vote yes and three vote no, the project would be approved. But under a site plan, you need more members to vote yes than that in order for the project to be approved. That's the only difference. It's still all, all neighbors would be notified of the planning board process and both cases, whether this is approved or not, and you still get notified of the planning board process. All that's changing is that supermajority or the special permit and supermajority vote. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chuck Yellow, 201 Bay Road. Is there, so there's no site plan for this project right now, right? Yeah. Mr. Town Manager. There, there is a site plan uh, approval process required. And is the site, do you have the site plan? The plan has been filed with the planning board. Um, so if anyone wants to see it, they can go up to the planning board um, office and they can see the plan. Good. How many acres are actually at this block? You know? Total acres? 185. So if, say next year, the people that own, the, uh, all the bars are owned by the same company? Different people that I I'm, I think they are. So if tomorrow, if today is approved, and next year the property owners decide they want to sell the bogs to the solar people, they can turn the entire property into solar panels, including all the other bogs as well, correct? Without having to go through all this again, just the permit. 
So all these potentially, if they chose to, because they knew it so bad, they could sell their property and all these bars could be turned into silver if they don't buy us. Is that correct? They, they, right, okay. They, they, <laughs> I didn't answer yet. They, the bogs still have to operate. You, you can't have the solar panels and not have cranberry bogs being act actively harvested underneath. So, in order, so if, the sol if they sold, if they got rid of the cranberry bogs, they have to get rid of the panels. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. It, it is, okay. Yep. Anyone? Yes, sir. Nick Johnson, 197 Bay Road. Um, I live directly across from these bogs. I understand the impact it has to our general area. The question seems to really be driven by the opportunity for us to go into the Green Community Initiative, which is going to open up potentially additional financial resources to the town. We have consistently short budgeted the school department. It could open up opportunities there. We have plenty of spaces in town that could also put in something similar. All of these solar farms are going to come become before the Planning Committee, Conservation Committee, whether or not this article was on here or not. It's making it essentially one less planning member, planning board member that would need to vote for it. And then it's still going to go before the public meetings that for the letter I just received in the mail, or I believe it's on the 22nd. The only thing this changes is additional green initiative grant money that we could get for other unrelated projects to our community. Whether this happens or not, these solar farms could still go in. This just creates additional opportunity down the road with additional financial resources. So it's not gonna change whether or not the farm goes in at the bog on Bay Road or anywhere else in town, but we need to just focus on the opportunity down the line to get additional money into our community, into our budget that we just can't find any other way, clearly the last few years. So we need to find other ways to make it happen. If it's not going to stop solar panels coming in anyways, whether it's four members of the planning board or five, I, I just don't see any reason to not approve this motion and then go to the meeting on the 22nd to hear more about the specific proposal for paper. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 5? Seeing none, we'll proceed to the vote. I will, uh, I, yes sir, I'll let you. Uh, I'm Earl Todd from uh, 31 Elm Street. Um, my question is, who is receiving the benefit of the solar farm in terms of reduced electricity costs? Do we know that? Mr. Town Manager. Well, I believe uh, this project is going to be selling the power to National Grid. National Grid is under um, guidelines by the state that they have to purchase so much of their power, has to be green by a certain date. And so there's an opportunity there to get in line with National Grid to be able to sell the power to National Grid. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, we will now move to the vote. As I said in the beginning, this requires a two-thirds majority vote. I will try to discern that by a show of hands as I have that discussion. If I am unable to determine whether it's a two-thirds majority vote, then I will ask for a standing count. So don't go anywhere after you raise your hand. All those in favor of Article 5, please indicate by raising your hands. All those opposed? I will do that one more time. I was never real good at math, so I'm taking it slow. All those in favor of Article 5, please raise your hands. All those opposed? <coughs> Article 5 passes by a two-thirds majority vote as declared by the bond grant. Is there any other business to come before this meeting? Seeing none, I declare the special town meeting to be adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>